There will always be a power dynamic between those that are giving away the money and those that are relying on the money. And so for us, it's, it's incumbent on us to treat our grantees like clients, to build the rapport and the relationship first, to demonstrate our value to grantees first, before we expect them to fully, um, you know, let us in, and uh, and 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 when they let us in, that's when the real work can begin. I don't think it's odd that we have the power differential. I, it's just one of those things. It's there. What matters, I think, is how you manage it. I think awareness is the first step, knowing that it's there, and then consciously making the effort or taking the steps necessary to minimize what could be the adverse effects of such a difference. And I think you do that through developing relationships with your grantees, um, being in conversation with them. Again, it's about minimizing it to the greatest extent possible. Thinking about power dynamics, one of the aspects that has been really important to me is that anytime we're rolling out a new idea or that um, that we're we're going to be starting something new as a foundation. One of the aspect, one of the things that we do is actually pick up the phone and reach out to a couple of our grantees that we think would be fits for it, to say, "Gosh, how does this how does this feel? Are there some suggestions that you would make, etc." Something that gives us a way to also bring them into the conversation. Our relationships with our grant partners, the organizations that we're funding, it's more than a transaction. It's an emotional connection because part of what they're doing is serving people on the ground. So we want to make sure that part of what we're doing is serving those organizations and the needs of those organizations, not just capacity-wise as a brick and mortar building, but as the staff needs, the board needs, and the executive director's needs. It is a matter of being aware of it. And I think for me, I had the added benefit that before I was on this side of the equation as a funder, I was on the other side of the equation. I was a grant seeker. That's how I ended up in philanthropy in the first place. So I remember that. And I remember what that felt like. And so I think that's something that I bring to my relationships with applicants or grantees. First and foremost, the empathy is critical. You know, going, can we as funders put ourselves in the shoes of these nonprofit leaders? And for most of us, the answer probably would be no. You know, having to be on that other side and experience what those leaders experience. I remember my first foundation meeting and when I was having to apply for a grant with a foundation and they met with us, the formality around it, the nervousness, I, that alone made me want to make sure that whenever I was meeting with an organization to try and first make it as light and fun and comfortable, you know, the idea of building trust. You can't do that if there is that power dynamic that's coming into play. Actually, one of our shh, secrets, but yet not so secret, <laughs> about why we love youth philanthropy is that it really does give us an opportunity to help to shift some of those conversations in the field and some of the changes that we would like to make um, as far as power dynamics, as far as really how do we break down so many of those silos that we've built in the field. And the young people don't see those those magic walls that we've created um, in so many ways. Will you tell each other your experiences and what you've liked and what you did like? And you talk about what could we accomplish together? What could we change that we wouldn't change by ourselves that we also enjoy? But when you find what you both enjoy, that really makes it so that you can work together. It's a dance that we do, and I love dancing with the funders who will teach me or match my step, and those that I can learn from are the most valuable to me, and the, they really help us grow and flourish. There's the power dynamic where, of course, we hold the money, and they're um, seeking that money. Um, but over time, if we're able to develop a, a you know, multi-year relationship with them, we become more authentic with each other. 
and that allows us to you know have respect for the things that are really challenging to them and for them to respect us enough to be honest about that. We see ourselves as being privileged to be able to support amazing programs in education and job creation and we see them as the experts but I know that's not a common way to view it especially where I live in Silicon Valley there's a lot of earned income um, really smart funders who are thinking that they may know better than their fundees how to go about what the nonprofits are doing. My hope for the larger funding community is that we can approach our grantees with the spirit of humility, with the spirit of learning, and with the understanding that our job is, is to support grantees and not to, um, and, and not to beat them down just because we have, uh, have, the, have the purse strings. One of the important lessons learned is that relationships take time, effort, patience, and sometimes receptivity. I wish that more of us in philanthropy actually put relationships before tasks.